This is the Reluctant Leader Podcast, the podcast designed to help you if you've landed a leadership role through no fault of your own and now need to find out what you should be doing. I'm your host, Mark Terrell, and have been there and know what it feels like and made all the mistakes. In each episode, I'll be getting to grips with a leadership topic by interviewing an expert in their field. You'll find out why they do what they do and take away some top tips you can use to become a more confident leader. For more content and to keep in touch with how the project is developing, go to www.thereluctantleader.co.uk. If you have any comments about the episode, you'll find me on LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter. So let's crack on with the show. Today, I'm talking to Greg Cooper. Greg is a LinkedIn coach and trainer and an award-winning marketer. After a career in tech marketing, Greg started up his LinkedIn training business in 2011. He works with small and mid-sized businesses from one to 300 employees to help them use LinkedIn to increase their visibility and find new customers. He runs regular public courses in Bristol, which attract people from London, the Midlands and the South Coast, as well as the local area. He also provides bespoke in-house courses and one-to-one sessions. Greg says he feels extraordinarily lucky to be working with such a diverse range of businesses and charities and inspiring business people. I hope you enjoy this chat we had about LinkedIn and I'll catch you all on the other side. So Greg, welcome to the Reluctant Leader podcast. Thanks, Mark. I'm very glad to join you. I've been looking forward to this for some time because uh, you're a busy person and you, you haven't had much time in your diary. So it's, I'm, um, I'm, I'm glad we got round to this eventually. Yes, I'm sorry I've been so elusive. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's no, no problem at all. Um, but, but So before we get stuck into the topic, um, the question I always ask my guests is, why do you do what you do and what was the pivotal moment that took you down this path? Okay. Well, uh, for many years, for for over 20 years, I ran a marketing agency working with big organizations in the IT sector. So it was a tech marketing agency. And I realized what I I really loved, I I loved working in that industry. It was always new. There was always new technology to learn and learn how to communicate about. And so I I realized that actually, well, I I love learning and I love, love learning new stuff. And then in 2011, I sold that agency and I kind of had some time off and I wondered what I'd do next. And I realized that uh, it was this passion to keep learning that, that was driving me. And I decided I'd, as I'd already done some training, I, I, I'd do some social media training and specifically focused on LinkedIn because we'd used that uh, quite extensively in the agency. Um, so that's why I decided to focus on LinkedIn. The other, I suppose, the other aspect is if I have a particular talent, I think my talent is encouraging people. And I've always enjoyed encouraging people. And I, uh, so that sort of fits in rather well with this thing about learning new stuff as well. So that's, that's when I set up the, uh, the LinkedIn training back in 2011. Okay, so um, yeah, quite a simple sort of process and, and uh, journey that uh, brought you to this place. And um, so we're talking about LinkedIn today, as um, yeah. as the listeners will will be expecting us to. Um, so where do we start with LinkedIn then? When when people think about LinkedIn, it's a social media platform, and you get a lot of people at the moment sort of comparing LinkedIn with all the you know with Facebook and all that sort of stuff. So someone yeah. that's fairly new to LinkedIn, um, where do you, what, how should they actually um, treat it? That's, that's the thing. How should they, what, what's the mindset around LinkedIn? What, what, do you, what would you suggest? Uh, yeah, okay. But I, I think, I think the, the key thing with LinkedIn is, the important thing is, it is, of all the social media, it's regarded as a professional platform. And uh, people trust what they read on LinkedIn in a way that they don't necessarily trust what they read in Facebook and on Twitter. So it's very much the professional platform. And people use it in three ways, really. Um, they use it to network for uh, as, a, as a networking tool, which, which has tremendous power to do that. They use it to keep them informed of what's happening in their industry. And they, they also use it clearly to look for job opportunities. Uh, which is a big part of LinkedIn for many people too. 
Yes, and, and I think uh, a lot of people uh, up until recently have treated LinkedIn as a place where you you post your CV, but it's it's become more of that now, isn't it? And it's about connecting the right people. Is and so so I suppose the big question is when you're on LinkedIn, who should I connect with, and and, and what what's the criteria around that? For what what would your your advice be around uh, connecting with people? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, LinkedIn at heart is a is a networking platform. And that it's it's really all about building relationships. So business has always been about networking and, and building relationships. But until LinkedIn came along, those networks were kind of invisible. But the genius of LinkedIn is it made them all visible. So, and I've forgotten your question now. <laughs> just uh, it's, it's just who, who we should connect with. Oh, yeah, who we should connect with. Yeah, brilliant. So, um you want to build your own network of people who are relevant to you. People, in, in simple terms, people to whom you can add value and people who can add value to you. So that will include people like your target audience, the people that you want to do business with. Uh, it also includes people like your uh, peers that you can learn from, colleagues and partners and collaborators. Um and it includes people who um, perhaps fit none of those categories, but just add value to your network. So, so perhaps you're connected to an accountant who shares, you don't need an accountant, but this accountant you've found on LinkedIn shares really useful stuff that you don't know about. So, mm. so it's, uh, yeah, it's all about value, really, adding value. Yeah, I must admit that when I'm on there, there's lots of information. I'm, you can quite easily get lost in all of it, but there is some great posts there. People are quite creative now on LinkedIn and oh, really nice. have a way of getting some information out there, which is really useful. And I think that's that's a, that's a useful thing to move on to is about information, how we put stuff out there. So if, if, I'm, if I'm a business leader and I'm, my time's a bit short, you know, yeah. what, what should I be posting about to, to um, get the, the, you know, the, the people to to see what I'm um, what, what message I want to get out there. Yeah, sure. I, th- I think the thing to remember as a business owner or business leader is that you are the face and the voice of the business. So it's really important that you're out there being well represented uh, and active on LinkedIn. Um, ideally, you should be posting regularly and uh, writing articles, uh, positioning yourself and your organization as experts in their area and thought leaders. Um, so the sort of things to be posting about, you could be addressing issues that your audience has. Um, it can be industry issues or it can be very specific issues for your particular audience. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about topical things, um, giving your point of view as an expert uh, in, in that particular area. Right. Yes, and I, and I, and there's obviously lots of ways we can do that in in written uh, formats or audio, maybe. Uh, but I, I've noticed that uh, on LinkedIn recently, there's more and more videos, and it's something that I'm getting uh, doing more of in in, in my posts. Um, is is that what you're seeing? Is that if you are you seeing that video is becoming more and more important in um, what you, what you put out there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Video is huge, and it's huge on LinkedIn. I mean, there are a number of people that uh, are using LinkedIn uh, video, and um, they're getting massive, massive sort of traction with that. They're getting two, three, four hundred thousand people watch their videos, and they're getting a couple of thousand people commenting and engaging with those videos. You know, I mean, not everyone's going to achieve that kind of level, but mm. but videos. Video is very easy to digest. People like video. We're used to seeing moving images. We relate to it. And uh, just like on Facebook, video is the most fa- most popular format on, on Facebook. Yes, yes. And I think it's it's what draws us in, isn't it? Um, you know, watching a video is just has a little bit more about it. And you, actually, it's a great way for people to get to know you, isn't it? If they've never met you, watching you on a video is is, is almost the next best thing, isn't it? Well, I think that's a really important point, Mark, because if once people have seen you and heard you in a video, it feels like they've actually met you. Mm. So that's, you know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be doing other sort of posts. Of course we should. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but video has a sort of rather unique way of, of uh, strengthening that relationship and breaking down those barriers for, for someone that you haven't met. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and I have noticed recently there's some a little uh, there's some people been talking about like automating um, our posts. Um, it's been out there a lot on, on other social media platforms. Yeah. Um, is is that the sort of thing that's happening on LinkedIn? Are you, are you seeing that? Yeah, I gather it's happened a lot on Instagram. Uh, um, I don't know about Facebook, but certainly also there are a number of uh, companies out there. They tend to be very small software companies that have come up with a bit of code that enables people to do things like uh, automatically endorse someone or automatically send invitations out there. They're all against the LinkedIn user agreement, and they all carry a very big risk that if LinkedIn identifies you're using one of those products, um, then it then it will either restrict you or it will completely strike you off. So you're putting your your network at risk, you're putting your account at risk, but also you know it's bad practice because how can you automate relationships? You know relationships are built one at a time, and, and LinkedIn is a relationship building platform. That's the whole essence of it. Um, you know, and, and there is no way to to kind of shortcut that satisfactorily. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I think that the um, we're tempted by things that are going to shortcut a process, aren't we? And, we, and um, yeah. anything that can do that. But when you really think about it, is it is it ever going to be uh, effective? In that, do we actually, as human beings, respond to that sort of thing? And actually, I expect most people can can, can tell what's going on a mile off, can't we? Yeah, I think in most cases you can tell if you've received some sort of automated message from a person. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think um, so. That's a little bit of a negative thing around LinkedIn, and obviously something to be aware of. But what what we really need to talk about is how you know someone in a leadership position can can make the most of you know LinkedIn. And um, you've sort of mentioned about uh, obviously connected with potential clients, also about getting our message out there, and also um, I suppose another another way of using LinkedIn is is to, is to also Think about um, advertised things that are coming up for us, isn't it? It's almost like that, you know, this is what we're doing and attract people to something that's happening in the future. I've seen that happen a lot. Yeah. I mean, promoting an event or something yes. that you're, you're working on. Yeah. And, yeah. and actually, LinkedIn are, are, are uh, introducing an events feature, huh? uh, which I'm currently uh, on the pilot program for that. And I've been using it to promote my uh, LinkedIn local events which have worked pretty well, actually, with the LinkedIn feature. There are some flaws with it, but um, they will hopefully be introducing that, rolling it out to everybody in, in the next uh, couple of months. All right, that's interesting. Um, I didn't know that. So that, that's something that they're obviously realised is an important part of um, LinkedIn. And um, oh, I'll be looking forward to hear, hear a bit more about that. That's, uh, that's an interesting uh, development. And I suppose that they are developing it in lots of ways. Is there any other things that you want to share that, you, that are in the pipeline at, at this time that might be, um, we might see in the future? Um, well, there is a rumour, and I've seen some evidence, that LinkedIn are trying to refine the notifications box a little bit so that, they'll, then a, that it could end up being, instead of just one stream of notifications, you have a number of tabs where you, you can decide which of the notification types you want to look at. Um, LinkedIn have also been trying to help people to grow their company page followers, and they've introduced a couple of features recently. One is where you connect with somebody um, on the point of connection that there's a little prompt now, would you like to follow this person's company page, which I think is a really good idea. Yes, I've noticed uh, that. Yeah, but unfortunately, they introduced another feature there where um, they started to allow people from their company page to invite their connections to follow the company page. Mm. And what happens, of course, quite predictably, is that those people that had that feature just blasted all their connections. Yeah. And so everybody was sort of inundated with these company page invita follow invitations. So right. they realized their mistake and they've actually temporarily withdrawn that while they redesign it yeah yeah but so that's that's a great follow-up because one of the questions i'm going to ask you about you know there's the personal pages which most of us have got so um how important is it for us um for us to have company pages as well as personal pages yeah well uh company pages are important from i think from a credibility point of view um, for bigger companies, they're, they're fantastic because they use them for recruitment. They get enormous followings. 
But for, for mid-sized and smaller businesses, it's really hard to get any traction on a company page, um, partly because I mean, we relate to people. We don't relate to logos. So um, most company pages get very, very little engagement on them. Um, but, but I think the best way to think about a company page is, is it's good for building awareness. So it's certainly good to keep posting there. Even if you're a one-person business, it's still worth having a company page. It's free. It takes about half an hour to set up. Mm. And you only need to really be posting once a week or a couple of times a month just to keep the whole thing active. But in terms of what really works on LinkedIn, it's the profession, it's the personal page, the personal network, where the real power is. So that's where you engage with your network. The company page is never going to be creating lots of opportunities for you. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to actually, it's something that comes to mind actually about, um, I think when you're busy, the temptation is to delegate the um, the responsibility to post things to somebody yeah. else. Uh, and I suppose that lends itself quite well to the company page, but I, I guess not so well with a personal page. Yeah, sure. I, I, you know, I read a number of articles a few years back by Richard Branson, who was very critical about other chief executives that never get involved with their social media and they just sort of completely delegate it to their PAs or a marketing person. Mm -hmm. And it's very much an advocate that you need to be involved, you need to be engaged. And, and uh, you know, I see lots of sort of owners and, and leaders in, in small, medium-sized businesses particularly um, who, who kind of are reluctant to get involved. But I think it's so important because that person is the person who owns the vision of the business, who mm. can best articulate what the business is about, whose job it is to actually go and inspire their staff and, and inspire their customers uh, to, to use the business. Um, so I really encourage people in sort of senior positions to to embrace LinkedIn and, and uh you know, to start posting, to, to write some articles, to become active and to engage on it, to get involved in the conversation. So a brilliant um, uh, example the other day, it was a post by a lady who had an accident, unfortunately, on the motorway. She pulled onto the hard shoulder. Another car had come up behind and smashed into the back of her. Fortunately, she and her children who were in the car uh, were okay. Uh, but she was just posting about it saying how important it is to to make sure you've got your seatbelts on or ideally even leave the car when you break down on the motorway. Mm. And um, there was a comment in there from the chief executive of Ford in the UK. And this guy was saying, look, really sorry to see that you've broken down there uh, and, had that t uh, and had that really bad crash. So glad that you're okay. Yeah. If you need a vehicle right now before the insurance is sorted out, let me know. Wow. So it can be yeah. very powerful when, when senior people get involved. Yes, and yes, I, I, and, and that's really positive, and that's, really, and that's a great story, uh, I have to actually say. But I've seen also people using it the other way around, isn't it? When they've learned a bit disgruntled, then mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, uh, I, I'm not sure whether it, sh it should be used for it, but I, I've seen people you know, venting their frustration with a supplier on, on LinkedIn, and I suppose that's the other the other way of using it, which is probably not quite so positive. Yeah, I mean, I, that, I mean, for me, that's a little unprofessional. If you've got mm. a problem with supply, you should really be directly addressing that with them, uh, and not broadcasting on LinkedIn. Uh, to be honest, I see very, very little of that. I mean, I've been on LinkedIn since two thousand six, and I haven't had a negative or rude comment or interaction in all that time. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, personally, uh, I'm the same. But there are some people that that see the opportunity to, you know, to get a message out there to a wide audience. They've probably got lots of connections yeah. and yeah. think that everyone's going to see it. And I think that's the, something to actually think about. Actually, when you've got a lot, a lot of connections, what? How does it work that to get your message? How many of those people are likely to see your posts? It, it, do, oh. do you know what that? Uh, you know, likely well, at a given it. time, it's around about somewhere four to five percent of your network will see your post. Right, 
Right. That's something to bear in mind, isn't it? So I suppose mm. in, in that respect, uh, if you want to, everyone to see it, then you've, uh, if, you, if you really want them to see something you're putting out, you've got to put the same post out, say, 20 times, I suppose. That sort of cuts down the uh, the, the, the likelihood they're going to miss it, I suppose. But uh, that's probably we'll taking a bit too far. We'll put 20 separate posts out. Yes. The time. We'll put posts out that are really interesting so that lots of people like it and engage with it. Therefore, if people are engaging with the post, then the LinkedIn algorithm will start to give it a boost and turbocharge it so it gets to, to be seen by many more people. Right, yeah. And that's, and that's worth mentioning, actually, isn't it? If, if we are we like something or we see something that's worth, worth um, that we want other people to see, what's the best thing to do there? Is it best to just uh, like it or actually we've got more options now, we can love it and we can applaud yeah. it and all sorts of things, can't we? So yeah. what, what's, the, what's the best way to react to something that you see is actually that you want to, your network to see? Comment on it. Right. Comments okay. are the gold standard. Comments are what the algorithm takes the most notice of. One of the things that LinkedIn is looking for is authentic conversations. So if you've got a post and uh, a conversation is developing on that, that, that post, not just great post comments, but yeah. comments that sort of start to build into a conversation, the algorithm will recognize that and it will give the post credit for that. That's one of the factors that it takes into account. Because if you think about it, you know, what LinkedIn want is for us to have a really interesting time when we're on their platform. Um, they don't want us to have a boring time because we'll go away. So mm -hmm. it's looking for those posts that are engaging, that are interesting, and that are relevant. And those are the posts it wants to show to us because it wants to capture and keep our attention. Yeah, and that's that's a that's a that's a good point actually, isn't it? It's, it's re realizing like you you started off. It's a networking, it's a social platform, and and to remember that and and when we see things and I and there there is some great content in, on um, LinkedIn and some real creative creativity I, I see now, but and and if we want other people to see it, so comment on it and then that means that your your network is more likely to see it, isn't it? So then it spreads out from there. It's like a, almost like a spider's web, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, the purpose of the post is, is to create a conversation. Mm. That should be yeah. your, your goal in, in posting something on LinkedIn. Yeah. And, and I think the other side of that is that um, it can be as valuable to comment on other people's posts because every time you comment on someone's post, it takes your little, you, you know, your little byline appears. So you can yeah. gain as much visibility by commenting on someone else's post that's popular and putting a thoughtful post comment on that, as you can by posting your original post. I'm not saying you should just comment, but, mm. but it's a balance, isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's a good job you point that out because we haven't mentioned it so far, but we've all got our own bios or, or we, we've got our own uh, pages um, and there are different sections of that, isn't there? And, yeah. uh, and it's important to get those right, isn't it? To make sure that we've got yeah. the right information in there. So how do we break that down into yeah. to what we should be putting into those, those sections? Yeah, so, you, so your personal profile is really important. It's a critical part of LinkedIn. It's part of your credibility. Um, it's important some of the basics to get you get a decent photo there you know not have a photo of you swigging wine or stroking the dog or in your wedding in a form um, yeah this is a serious business platform it should be a nice headshot friendly professional you should use the, the background image at the top of the profile is your visual hook so you know that's an opportunity to use something that, that sucks people you know draws people in mm -hmm. um, then you've got underneath your, your photo, you've got a, a line there, which defaults to your job title. But actually, you can use that because it's prime real estate right at the top of the profile. You can use that to uh, put a positioning statement in there. So, for example, um, one of my connections is a sales trainer, had a profile uh, a headline that went, um, I teach business people who think they can't sell to make more sales. Right. You know, really snappy, and tells tells straight away what you what he does, and then so getting yeah. the top of the profile is really important. Getting that right is really important because then that encourages people to read the next section, which which LinkedIn have recently retitled as about. That's your effectively your summary section. Mm. But one of the things I see a lot with senior business own, owners and leaders is 
surprisingly, people are using, putting stuff in there that makes it look like they're looking for a job. And, right. You know, and think, well, but do you own the company? Well, you know, why are you putting all this in there? So that really needs to be about the business. It needs to be positioning the business. What, you know, what does a business do? Who does the business serve? What's unique about the business? What geographical areas is it working? If you're the business owner, you can talk a bit about your vision, what mm. led you to start the business, the vision that is taking you forward, where you'd be going next. Um, so the about section is a really important section there. Mm. Uh, people often ask me, um, you know, what should I do? In, where should I talk about me? And really the place to talk about you is, um, apart from saying mentioning your role a little bit in the, the about section, is primarily done in the experience section. And that's where you can talk in much more depth about what your role is. Yeah. So the other aspects, I suppose, are, are, are to point out um, briefly on the profile are, are social proof. Um, there's an endorsement section where people can endorse you for specific skills that you've chosen to put on your profile. But also very importantly, I think more importantly, uh, is the recommendations because the recommendations are in independent, objective. Someone sat down for 15 minutes and wrote something about what it's like to work with you or what, what you're like to work with as a supplier. Um, so that's that's really important. So I think those are the most important parts of the profile without talking for another half an hour about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I think you summed up really well. But I think you've, you've mentioned about endorsements and testimonials, which are really important. And what, I, uh, what I'd uh, tell people that are new to the workplace um, is to – Firstly, to join LinkedIn as soon as possible, and then um, treat it almost as if they're, it's almost like a live CV. So in other words, as they yeah. learn things and how they experience things and as they obviously move jobs, it can be a great place to actually have a, a CV that's constantly being updated and it's up, up to date and live almost. Um, and, and would you agree with that? That, that yeah, sort of, absolutely. Yeah. There's, you can add additional sections to your profile, particularly things mm. like accomplishments. So if you do courses, then, then they can be added on there and it all builds a picture up. I think mm. it's also really important what you're suggesting also, that, that, that this is not a once do once and forget. Mm. This is, you know, on your profile, you should be coming back to it every sort of three months or so, updating it, making sure it still reflects what you're doing. Perhaps your ideas have changed, perhaps your role has changed, etc. Mm. It's very much like a website, isn't it? Very, you know, websites, um, the people that talk about websites that do them all the de all the time say that a website should never be finished. And I, I suppose that's the same with the LinkedIn profile. It's, it's always constantly evolving, isn't it? Well, it's an interesting point, Mark, actually, because mm -hmm. I think for smaller and medium-sized businesses, almost your LinkedIn profile can be more important than the website mm. because it's getting more eyeballs. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, and for me personally, I think that's definitely the case. People see my, my LinkedIn profile probably before my, my website. So it's more important to keep it up to date and uh, relevant uh, and keep evolving and, uh, and learning um, from, from people like you that um, know your stuff um, mm -hmm. because um, it's a moving platform. Things are always changing like any social media. It's adapting to what people want. Yeah. And people, as they see that we, we need, and obviously competing with other platforms, I suppose that's always going on, isn't it, to make it more relevant and more attractive. Um, so that's all great. But I think what I picked up from our conversation is that when, when you're in a leadership position, rather than talking about yourself so much, it's an opportunity that you can talk about what you do, how you do it, and most importantly, why you do something and that vision thing. Yeah. get that message across and even if you know I've, I've, I've had some clients that come from a, a non-for-profit charity background and, and that's really important to, to to get that message across isn't it to attract people in many ways people that want to come and maybe work with you or maybe sponsor you or invest in you and all those sort of things and that's the thing that attracts people it's not so much about what you do it's about why you do it isn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting, you know, sometimes I'll read a, uh, someone's summary on their profile and then it's okay. And then I'll talk to them. 
and in conversation that they they talk in the most passionate and inspiring way about <laughs> what they do. And I think, stop, stop. This should be in your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> yes. You know, this is what people want to know. This is what they want to read. Yeah, and it is funny, isn't it, how we are almost reserved in the fact that, you know, we think that we have to conform to a certain, you know, um, thing when we go onto these sort of platforms. But actually, the more human we are, the better, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's about being human. Okay, well, thank you for your time today, Craig. So, unfortunately, time has um, is rapidly running out. And as you know, um, I prompted you beforehand, um, we like to leave the guests, uh, sorry, the audience and the listeners, I should say, with some top tips. So what, what would be those three top tips to take away from our conversation and, and, and how can people get the most out of the LinkedIn platform? Yeah. Well, I'd say, first of all, work on your personal brand. If you're a senior leader or manager in a business, you're one of the custodians of the brand's message and, and vision. Uh, so your LinkedIn profile really needs to be expressing that. So secondly, I'd say invest time in building a relevant network. And one of the great things with LinkedIn is you get to build your own custom audience. Um, so that will include people you want to do business with, partners, collaborators, as well as people who you personally feel add value to, to your uh, um, online life. Mm. So, and then the third thing is, I think, really be active and involved. Uh, join the conversation. Um, don't. Don't delegate your LinkedIn activity. It doesn't have to take that long, you know, 10 minutes a day. Um, we've all got dead time. You can get the mobile app. You can be doing stuff on the mobile app while you're waiting for a meeting to start. Um, just just keep active. Yeah, brilliant. Super stuff. So thank you for your time again, uh, Greg. It's been uh, really informative, as I expected it to be. And um, until we meet again, hopefully in, in person, I should say, in, in real life, rather than on, uh, on, um, online, um, have a great day. Catch up soon. Thanks again for inviting me, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, please take a moment to leave a review. Don't forget to check out The Reluctant Leader Project at www.thereluctantleader.co.uk. Make a note to start, stop or continue doing whatever struck a chord in this episode. And until next time, be the best you can be.